Hi, I'm Okiansky, and a great feature that you can add to your player's inventory system is the ability to store items in and out of chests. In this video, I'll be showing you exactly how you can do that. Alright, so I'm going to briefly start off by showing you just how to set this up um, as far as um, GUI, putting the events down, the functions, and where to place the scripts. So. Um, I'm going to start with replicated storage where I put the GUI, I have four, four folders, uh, GUI, items, remote events, and functions. Uh, GUI, I just put a simple chest GUI, I'm going to put it um, in start GUI so you can see it. Here it is, um, pretty simple, it just has an exit button, a couple text levels, and a frame. Uh, that's, that's all you need for this tutorial, so I'm going to put that back in there. Um, for items, I just went ahead and put a bunch of items into the starter pack to work with to demonstrate and then I just copied those and put them into an items folder in the replicated storage so the server has a copy of all of them uh, just separated in one spot. Uh, remote, events, remote events and remote functions, um, I got a bunch of them here. You can pause the video and just copy them all but um, I have chest close, uh, one for opening, uh, moving the GUI, moving chest items, moving player items, updating chest items, uh, then functions for getting chest items, um, getting whether a chest is occupied from a player or not, uh, getting a max amount of items, and getting the player items. So um, that's it for the replicate storage. And then there's only a couple scripts that you need to place. Uh, one of them belongs in the starter player. That's the client script. So I'm going to go ahead and play or, uh, place a local script inside of the starter player script. So I'm going to name it uh, chess client. And I'm going to put a server script, normal one, server, inside of server script service. I'm going to call it chest server. Now I'm not actually going to do anything with chest server in this video, but in the next video I will. Uh, this video is just going to focus on the chess client scripts, half of it. The other half will be in the next video, and then um, the rest of this video will be uh, on the actual chess itself. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the model that I'm going to work with. I have this in the description if you want to download it. But uh, it's just a simple chess model. It's got a few parts in it that are pretty crucial to how it works. Uh, you got the basic parts of, of course, but you also have the open open piece, the closed piece, the click box, and uh, inside the click box you just want to have something that the players can like click on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a click detector inside of that. And then inside of that click, de click detector I'm going to go ahead and put a server script I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna just call it chest. This one I'm gonna do in the entirety today, and also another string value. And I'm just gonna call this one ID. So each chest is gonna have a different ID. You can put whatever you want, letters, numbers, doesn't matter. It's a string. But I'm gonna go ahead and put um, 0002. Um, my other one is 01. So I just have it like that. So I'm going to start with the chess script, um, which is the the server script inside this one that we just placed. And um, I'm going to start off by listing off a bunch of variables, um, object variables. So uh, start with the click detector. That one's pretty basic. Next, I'm going to do the chest itself. Parent, not parent. Open door is equal to chest.open and then the oh the closed part chest.closed and lastly the chest ID maybe the click detector that ID that value these four are all objects and then this one is the value of the ID of the chest that we named um, next I'm going to get the replicated storage because that's going to be needed. I'm 
And I'm going to get the remote events inside of that. And the remote functions. All right. Uh, another variable is followed by um, some starting off settings for the chest. I'm uh, going to go ahead and set a bool value of open to false. And that's going to switch off and on later. Uh, open door, that transparency equals one. Open door, that can't collide equals uh, false. Closed door, the opposite. And just going to set the max activation distance for the click detector. And one last variable, which is the current player, and that's going to keep track of what player is currently uh, occupying this chest. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tag using the collection service to the chest. Uh, you can do that by doing local collection service. Um, equals game get service collection service and then using the collection service uh, function add tag uh, I'm gonna add it to the chest I'm gonna give it a, uh, I'm gonna give it a string value called chest like that and that's gonna be used for later in the server script but for now we're just gonna leave it there okay now we need something for when the click detector is uh, clicked uh, something is actually going to happen to this chest, so click detector dot mouse click uh, connect function player nope not current player player um, if player dot character dot humanoid dot health is equal to zero then return end because we don't want that if open is equal to false then open equals true so we want to make sure the chest is actually closed before we open it and then we set it to open and you're gonna go ahead and just copy this and set it to the opposite of everything so zero becomes one true becomes false And um, you can set this one to zero, so you can no longer click on it. And we also want to change the player's walk speed. So we want to freeze him for a little bit while he's in the chest. Can't move. So to do that, player.character.humanoid.walkspeed is equal to zero. Player.character.humanoid.jump.power is equal to zero as well. I'm going to set the current player to player. Um, and I'm going to fire off the remote event uh, chest open, which you'll see later in the other script. We're going to fire to the client, we're going to fire to the player client, and we're going to send over the chest ID with it. Uh, Player.character in the event that the humanoid um, dies, so humanoid had died, connect function. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and let's close the chest. So just copy that, paste, tab everything correctly, and just set everything to the opposite of what it was so that it's closed now. Open equals equal to false. Transparency on that's one, false, etc. Back to what it was, 20, 16, 50 are the default values for walk speed and jump power. If you want it to be a little bit different, you can change that however you want. Same thing with this. Um, and then lastly, remote events that chest removed UI, fire client. There's another event that you'll see later. Um, and then lastly, 
in the event that the remote event for chest close is fired from the client, uh, we need to set something up for that. So remote events that chest close dot on server event connect function player ID if ID is equal to chest ID. So we're working with the right chest here. Um, just go ahead and copy this. It's going to do the same thing there. Close. Just go ahead and close the, close the chest. Nothing too fancy. And that would be it for the um, chest script. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, before we actually test anything though, we have to put some things in the chest client to work with these events. So this one actually has to fire and then for these two, these, so for these two, chest open and chest remove GUI, we need something in chest client that listens for those. And then for the one in chest that listens for chest close, we need to have something that on the chest client that actually fires that. So it all works together. Uh, in chest client, um, I'm going to go ahead and copy replicated storage. Uh, I'm also going to have another one called local GUIs equals replicated storage that GUI folder. Uh, our local player is easy to get in a client script, just the game that players that local player. And now we need a chest occupied bool value, kind of similar to the open one here, or the current player here that kind of just switches off and on uh, depending on. Uh, if it chest, if the chest is, or I'm sorry, if this player is currently already occupied with a chest or not, so we can keep, we can make sure he's only opening one chest at one time. So local chest occupied is equal to false. All right, so um, I'm going to start off with the chest open. I'm going to listen for remote events. Chest open uh, on client event connect function chest ID so um, this when this fires right here it's going to send it to this player this chest ID it's going to send it right here and if the chest occupied is equal to false then chest occupied is now equal to true local GUI equals uh, GUI is that chest GUI clone GUI dot parent equals player dot player GUI and GUI just as a just to make sure it's enabled uh, true local exit button is the little button that I put inside the um, little red button in the corner that I put inside of it uh, I actually named it exit button so GUI dot frame dot exit button exit button dot mouse button one click let's see button one click connect function so when that's clicked it's just going to go ahead and fire off the remote event for chest close which we made earlier let's send the chest ID over and so it's going to close it when this listens for it it's going to say okay here's the ID if the ID matches the chest ID of this chest, it's going to close this chest. So it all works. And you'll see that in a minute. And then on the client side, we're just going to go ahead and GUI destroy. Um, chest occupied is now equal to false. Um, and that is almost it for chest client. I'm going to go ahead and listen for the other one so we went ahead and listened for chest open right here but now we need to do the same thing for chest remove uh, chest remove GUI so it's pretty simple chest remove GUI dot on client event connect function local GUI equals player not player GUI find first child, 
to just see if it exists. Chest UI, because that's the name that I named it, so it's whatever you named it uh, in here. If the GUI exists, then destroy it. If it doesn't exist, then you don't have to worry about it, because it's already not there. And that is pretty much it for part one of this chest UI. It's just gonna. Uh, we haven't gotten into any item sorting or item moving yet. Uh, that'll be in part two, but if I just walk over to this chest, uh, if I click on it, I can no longer move. I'm actually trying to move right now, but I can't. Um, I've got the chest opened, like so, and my GUI has popped up, and the exit button is there. If I click on that, it'll close. I'm able to move again, and the chest itself closes, as you can see, and we can do that forever and ever and ever if I get it right. You see like that. So, uh, really nicely done. Um, didn't mess up that time <laughs> like I did last time. But uh, anyway, in the next part, we're going to be working on finishing the chess client because there's actually a lot more code that's supposed to be in here for when it comes time to uh, moving around uh, the chess items inside of the chest on the on the player's screen then chess server actually has to manage all of that on the server and make and like keep track of what of what chess have what items and so on and so forth so uh, that'll be in the next video uh for now uh you've just got this so all right and i'll see you in that time so see ya